Hey everybody, how's it going? Hey, it's Timer here, and we are taking a look, another look, a continuing look, at Forza Horizon 4 on the PC. So, um, we last time we left off, we finished the Low Racer Challenge and uh, the Low Racer story, story thing. Uh, we didn't finish it. We got two thirds of the way through it. We didn't finish it. Finishing it is still uh, in the future. It's it's a little. It's a few videos from now. Uh, but in between now and then, uh, we are going to take a stab at the cross country championship, uh, which we are zeroing in on as we speak. Uh, I think that it's going to be. I think it's going to be in this video, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, but I wanted to get this video up. Um, because I've been putting up a lot of Soul Calibur 6 videos and I wanted to throw one of these in just for so everybody would realize that I'm still doing this and I haven't forgotten about it and I'm still doing this Let's Play and uh, all that. If you are interested in the Soul Calibur 6 videos, uh, there are on a playlist on the channel. Uh, the other thing is that uh, there will be more going up soon, but I wanted to put this one up in between. Uh, you're also going to be seeing both Soul Calibur 6 and um, Forza Horizon 4 videos going up throughout the time that we're going to be putting up um, Red Dead Redemption 2 videos as well. So um, it's going to be kind of an all-in for the next few days, uh, maybe even a little longer than that, could be possibly even a week. Um, but that's going to be kind of the way it's going to run. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it'll all work out. Uh, if everything cooperates, uh, YouTube, video editing software, all that good stuff. Uh, so if everything cooperates, we'll be uh, in a pretty good position with lots and lots of content for you guys to watch on the channel. Um, if anything gets delayed, I'm going to try to make it be the Forza Horizon 4 Let's Plays, um, as that there are tons of those on the channel, and I think a lot of people are still trying to catch up um, or trying to decide which ones I want to watch or whatever uh, because it seems like those are a little bit uh, waning in popularity compared to some of the other things but of course these are all different audiences I mean uh, the people who watch the fighting game videos probably don't watch these the people who watch these probably don't watch the fighting game videos so on and so forth uh, there might be some overlap with the uh, general videos uh, you know just uh, you know first impression videos for instance but uh, I don't necessarily believe that that's necessarily the case either. So we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see how it all goes. Uh, but again, if anything is going to get delayed, it's going to be these. Uh, if that's something that has to happen. Uh, hopefully it won't have to happen and so it won't be an issue. Um, probably but because actually I have the most videos of these ready to go than I do anything else. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that won't be the case. <laughs> um, anyway, but uh, yeah, uh, really um, looking forward. I, I did get uh, the announcement uh, yesterday that uh, they will be uh, putting up the root editor, the route editor, whatever you want to call it, uh, this week on uh on the live game uh which i do plan on utilizing like everybody is meant like i've been mentioning for quite a few videos now uh so probably what i'm going to do is um i am going to record some stuff with the root editor um maybe just do like a root editor first impressions video that is kind of outside of the let's play i'm not sure uh, it's really going to depend on how many Let's Play videos I get put up in the next week. Um, I will definitely be trying the root editor probably the day it goes up. But as far as getting a video up for it, I don't know when I'm going to be doing that. Um, it'll happen eventually, uh, just in the in the course of you know regular videos, it'll happen. But uh, unfortunately, I can't say, oh yes, this is definitely when it's going to be occurring. Because uh, I don't know, it's going to depend on how the how the f how the footage how the f how the footage flows. Excuse me. Um, the I was on in the live game recently, just a couple days ago, and I recorded a very small amount uh, for you guys uh, because it was I did some rivals challenges, I did uh, a a set of blueprint print races, 
and I also uh, did a barn find. So I wanted everybody to see the barn find, which is why I originally decided to record it. And then um, I thought, oh, okay, well, since I did the barn find, I might as well put some other stuff in the video. So it's not just a barn find tacked on to some other, uh, you know, group of footage. So I got a little bit more. Uh, I actually found a house that I hadn't seen before. So I picked that up. Um, it was a cheap house. It was a 200,000 credit house, which is very cheap still. It must have just been something I drove past and never realized was there. I, I don't know. I, it came it came out like I discovered it, so I'm not entirely sure what the deal was with that, but whatever. Um, anyway, but um, so uh, they got all that going on. Um, what else? Um, nothing really is noteworthy other than than that. Uh, this is some open world stuff for you guys. I haven't done that in a hundred thousand years, it seems like. But I figured I'd do some open world stuff here uh, just on the way to this next event. I figured it would be good to show a little bit more of the open world, especially in the uh, in the fall. Which, the fall is, as I had said before, one of the harder ones to show in events. Uh, I think Cross Country kind of shows it off pretty good, though. Uh, as well as uh, in the uh, spring, uh, I think the Cross Country events uh, show off pretty decently. Oh, this is the very first cross-country event race that you're supposed to do at the very beginning of the game uh, when you go to do the cross-country events. Um, the only thing that I can think, the only reason why I can think that this didn't work out right was because the um, because in the cross-country events in the beginning of the game, the way that, that, the way that I was doing that was because there were, um, because there were uh, seasonal events going on at the same time, I just picked a seasonal event. So I must have picked enough seasonal events that it opened up some of the other races, and then I just never came back to do this. So uh, I thought it was pretty funny, um, but uh, and I did get this uh, lifted buggy that I really wanted, but then I decided, well, the buggy isn't upgraded, so I better go back to the Warthog, but I am going to upgrade the uh, buggy, and I'll show you that in a, in races and stuff like that. Um, in this, it should be in this video, so you'll be able to take a look at that, and you'll be able to see how cool that that buggy is. It's a lot of fun to drive. It is like I like I had said in previous videos, kind of squirrely on pavement, which I don't really understand, but whatever. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, there the Ford, uh, I think it's a Ford Titan, actually, is also uh, very good. On, uh, on dirt and off the road, but it is terrible on um, on uh, pavement for some reason. It has a very bad turning radius, and then when you try to pull out of the turn, it has this tendency of going too far one way or the other for some reason. I don't know. It maybe it's a a speed thing. Uh, sometimes when you have when you're carrying too much speed into a turn and you do something like that, you can kind of, you can have a problem that way but I don't know I felt like it was I didn't feel like that was the issue but who knows uh, anyway I haven't driven that truck in quite a while I should really uh, drive it just for some some uh, diversity sake but uh, I really really like the uh, warthog so it's kind of hard to get uh, to stop driving it when it's so good on these tracks um, so uh, you will be seeing some other cars as well the Lamborghini Urus uh, among them because the um, the regular default races do not allow you to uh, sometimes drive just anything you I think it's a uh, super saloon buggy and then uh, and then they let you do whatever you want for the other one um, so when it's a um, Oh, and then there's, oh yeah, sports utility vehicle. That's the other one. So it's sports utility vehicle, super saloon, not super saloon. It's so, sports utility vehicle, buggy, and then whatever you want. So it's, it's, it is still three. It's just, I, super saloon, I was keep that, uh, they have that for uh, the road races. And I keep getting the, getting them confused, but yeah, the, uh, the uh, super, uh, the, uh, so it's a buggy, like I said, the buggy, uh, whatever you want, and then uh, the sports utility vehicles. I'm not entirely sure about that part, uh, why all of a sudden they decided, 
how about sports utility vehicles? I'm like, I, I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, that's the that's uh, when I use the Lamborghini Urus. Um, and then the buggy will be the uh, that Beetle. And then, uh, of course, whatever I want is the uh, Warthog, uh, mostly. I think I might use the buggy one other time uh, when I didn't need to, but I could be wrong. Uh, so that's really cool. I really enjoy it. I really uh, like most of them in this one. Uh, as opposed to in some of the other in some of the other games where oh my gosh the cross country thing was the thing that I dreaded the most I always had to, you know to complete the the full thing you always had to do it and I always felt like it was the worst one because it was so random well they definitely fixed some of that in this they definitely did a good job of toning the randomness down uh, I still think at a higher at higher difficulties there still would be more randomness, uh, and it would be way more difficult uh, than it is now. But uh, at the lower difficulties, it's fine, which the same cannot be said for the other uh, Forza Horizon games with the cross-country races. They definitely not uh, that well-tuned uh, in, um, in those particular events. Uh, the other events are mostly fine. I don't think I've ever run into the kinds of issues that I run into in the cross country events in other races. So it's just really the cross country events. And I think it's just because the uh, it's, you know, they're built a little differently as far as um, how the drive avatars manage the, you know, manage where they're going. And uh, sometimes some of the weird effects from doing like jumps and things like that can, uh, can mess them up somehow. So anyway, um, so it's really a fun time. I really enjoyed this part of uh, what I was doing. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't had a hell of a lot of time to be playing Forza Horizon recently. I do have a lot of footage, but it is all about a week or two old, uh, maybe a little more than that. It's, it's between a week and two weeks old. Um, so I do definitely have a lot more to show you. But I don't have, uh, but I haven't done it uh, very recently uh, that much. I only played, the last time I played, I only played for an hour and a half. Um, whereas uh, normally I play anywhere from two to four hours every single time that I capture. So generally it's four hours, but sometimes it's just two. But uh, yeah, I try to make it at least two hours uh, to do the capture for it. So um, I haven't really... I haven't really had time. I've been doing so many other things, um, getting you know Soul Caliber footage, for instance, and then uh, working with the footage that I already have to try to get it edited and ready to upload, so that you guys can uh, have a lot of content to watch. So uh, I don't know exactly, like I said, what the timeline is going to be for uh, when we're going to kind of when this is kind of going to catch up. Uh, I'm assuming there is going to be some point where it's going to catch up. Uh, if nothing else, when the credits roll and I stop playing, uh, you know, I stop playing until there's DLC, then at the very least, it'll catch up then. But uh, hopefully it will catch up before that. So we're both in a little bit where we're, both things are a little closer together. So I'm not doing commentary for a video that is a week old uh, or something like that because it's, it is a little more difficult to remember what happened. And uh, therefore, it gets, you know, the commentary is maybe not as good as it could be if it was a more recent event, you know, if it was something that I was more familiar with because it had just happened. So uh, we'll see how that all goes. Uh, hopefully it will work out, uh, but I can't make any promises, obviously, uh, just because of the way things are going right now and the number of games that are coming out and everything else. Um, I will try to do a first impressions video for any new games that come out that are, you know, any big new games that come out. Um, I know I am late on my uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 4 uh, first impressions, but uh, they've had so much server issue, so many server issues, uh, and I've had a lot of server instability while I've been playing that I felt like I wouldn't be giving it a fair shake if I did a first impressions uh, of it right now. Uh, my suggestion right now is to wait a month and then buy it. If you're planning on buying Black Ops 4, you know, wait a month 
and uh, go back and see and you know check in with message boards and things like that and see what they're saying you know Reddit for instance and see what they're saying about server stability because uh, there there has been a big thing about international servers them you know not um, having enough ping and things like that but on the national side you know in the in the UN, in the United States uh, and in uh, and in um, Europe uh, there's another issue which is that um, the you'll be in a game you'll get towards the end of it and there will be a network error code and the game will drop um, and it's happened quite often um, it's not just people pulling you know that they, they can't just be people pulling the plug because they're dedicated servers so you can't pull the plug in a dedicated server so it must be something to do with stability so um, like I said uh, they're still having some issues uh, with that uh, also I've only played blackout you know uh, half a dozen times had some pretty terrible results uh, I'm gonna have to uh, you know play more get better that kind of stuff um, the game runs really well uh, on my PC. Uh, I think that the big issue is that I want it to run. I want it to be uh, running in with too many uh, qualities, you know, higher quality settings. So I'm not getting enough F. Uh, I'm not getting enough FPS out of it. Um, I've finally lowered everything for the uh, regular multiplayer, and I still have to lower it for uh, Blackout. Uh, blackout, I'm only getting like 70 frames a second, uh, whereas in um, the regular multiplayer, I'm getting um, anywhere between 187 and 236. So um, I want to get the numbers higher. I wanted to get at least to 100 in Blackout uh, before I really start to put it through its paces and uh, think that I'm going to be doing well in the game. So here is that beetle. Uh, one of the uh, this is one of the races that it's required uh, in. Uh, I don't know if I've upgraded it at this point or not. I missed that part when I was talking about the other stuff. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe it's upgraded. Maybe it isn't. Anyway, um, it's a lot of fun to drive. It is pretty good in this situ in these uh, cross country races and dirt races and stuff like that. Uh, I will say it's a little bit more squirrely than like a bigger. Uh, like a bigger vehicle, but because you're going against other buggies, uh, it's about it's very similar. Uh, buggies as a whole are not very stable, so um, it's not that surprising. Um, although it it does take something some getting used to. Um, whereas in uh, when you play it with a bigger buggy, which I've done in Forza Horizon Three, um, it is a little easier to get used to. Although you do have to kind of check your speed. A little more in a buggy than you do in a car because you do have the possibility the real possibility of flipping in a buggy as opposed to in a car uh, most of the time if you put a roll cage in the car generally speaking unless you do something really strange you're not gonna flip uh, but in a buggy you can flip for sure uh, you just uh, have to take a turn a little wrong or you just have to um, maybe jump off a ramp at the wrong angle uh, which, of course, you can jump off the ramp at a wrong angle with any vehicle and you'll flip. But uh, buggies just tend to be more, for whatever reason, more aerodynamic in this game and, in, you know, in Forza Horizon in general. And they tend to want to fly around a little more than the average uh, car. So that's partly it. Uh, the other thing is that I think that the buggies are really good on a variety of different surfaces as opposed to a lot of times when you're driving a truck or a car um, and it hits a different surface it can definitely it can be a crapshoot sometimes uh, most of the time it's fine but every once in a while it's kind of a crapshoot like oh I, I this is really slowing me down a lot kind of thing um, so I don't know uh, I, I've had I, this is one of my more favorite cars uh, it's just a lot of fun to drive and uh, it's a little bit of a challenge but it's still uh, a lot of fun as opposed to some things like that can be a challenge and then they're not fun at all <laughs> so uh, yeah that can that can be an issue so um, so yeah 
so did I? No, I didn't upgrade the. I didn't upgrade the uh, buggy yet. So uh, you'll be seeing that probably in the next race. Uh, is the buggy upgraded? Nope. We're back to the Urus. So this is this is kind of how it works. The uh, the the race will determine what kind of vehicle that you're allowed to drive. And uh, I probably drove the buggy to this race. But then uh, I found out that it was only available for sports utility vehicles, so I had to drive the Urus. Um, this happens quite a bit in the cross-country races. Um, it also happens as you go along and uh, narrow down the field with the number of races that you can do in both the road uh, racing and the dirt racing. Uh, the point of the street racing is that you can bring any car you want, so they don't do that in there. Although, in the street racing, a lot of times uh, there is an issue with uh, stability because you're driving in the rain, you're driving very fast, and you have to get around tight corners uh, quickly. So sometimes uh, just the, uh, the way the track is laid out dictates uh, what is best to bring to the street races. So that's kind of a whole other thing. Uh, we are going to be doing some more street races uh, further into this video. Um, we are getting, we're closing in. This is the, this is like this video and I think maybe two more. And we're going to be closing in on doing all of the races, having finished all the races. Uh, except for those, the drag strip events that I still have not unlocked. Um, those are going to probably be one of the last things that I do. Uh, because they are very... Uh, I'm not going to say difficult to do. It's just grinding, uh, which I, generally speaking, don't like to take my time doing when I'm playing this game. Uh, what I will say, though, is that the whole issue that I had with um, grinding up to do the other uh, races um, might be solved by the root editor, or it might just be an issue of doing a bunch of seasonal stuff. Fortunately, it seems like they're adding a decent amount of seasonal stuff every season so um, it could actually end up being that I only will have to do about a half or a quarter of the grinding that I thought I was gonna have to do because they give you so many events uh, that you're able to do every season as seasonal events uh, that will get you uh, you know uh, points to get to the uh, to the trial championships uh, I can't wait to to get there so that I can finish the game or do whatever happens after that. I still don't know what happens after that. Um, I have a feeling, I might be wrong, but I have a feeling that you go through the first trial championship and the credits roll. But I could be wrong. We'll see. So uh, that is quite a ways into the future, though. Uh, I would say it's probably at least um, five to ten videos from this. Uh, so don't uh, don't get too antsy <laughs> because uh, it's it's quite a ways into the future. I haven't done it yet. I haven't even gotten to the point where it's possible that I might be doing it. Um, the high with the highest uh, tier that I have, which is in road racing, uh, I am still only at fifteen, I believe. So uh, that is not going to uh, it's not going to be any time in the very near future, uh, unless this root editor thing is very robust and it's able to you can just do one road race after another and make it different and get the full number of points uh, if you can do that then yeah maybe I will be able to get there quicker but uh, who knows uh, we'll see the root editor isn't out yet and uh, as I said I'm not gonna be able to devote the time to Forza Horizon 4 this week that I normally would so I probably won't know at least until next week, uh, maybe even uh, a little later than that, um, because I'll be playing Red Dead Redemption 2, and I will be doing putting up footage for you guys on the channel. Uh, probably not going to be uh, worrying about spoilers, uh, considering the the interest, which is very saying it mildly that the mainstream media has and the mainstream and the major outlets in the video game uh, in video game journalism uh, have for Red Dead Redemption 2 I would say that 
there's if you go onto the internet after the game launches, uh, you will probably be spoiled uh, on the entire game, probably within a week of it coming out because it's just going to be everywhere. It's going to be omnipresent. Uh, they're already kind of starting to do it, and the game isn't even out yet, and none of them have even played it yet, really, and they've all they've already started doing it. So it's just like okay. Um, if this game is bad, um, it will probably be devastating to just about every major outlet out there because they won't have any game. Pl- they won't have anything to do for the next month because all of this planned content that they planned for this game will not won't work because nobody will be nobody will want to look at it because nobody will care. So uh, I can't wait. <laughs> So uh, as much as I would like it to be good because I you know liked really liked the first one, it would almost be better if the game was bad because then it would actually force force some uh, planning planning editors to actually do something for the next month. But anyway, um, yeah, I, I I really hope it's good because uh, I've really I really enjoyed the first one and I hope that this one at least is as good as that was so that uh, it's something to enjoy on the new consoles um, as opposed to just having to go back and play Red Dead Redemption again. I, I think Red Dead Redemption needs a uh, PC port, obviously. Um, everybody says how h- terrible the code is for it and everything else, but I would assume that these port houses that, that basically remake the game in order to put it out could take care of that you know uh with modern tools and everything else i would think that they would be able to just okay well this all this code in this area of the game sucks you know let's rewrite it and do it over again and fix it um but i don't know uh i guess it if that was possible uh you know of all of the uh publishers 2k would have done it you know because they would want to put microtransactions in it but uh, I guess maybe <laughs> maybe it's just too difficult. You know, they just uh, they won't pay they won't pay somebody enough to do it. You know, it wouldn't be cost effective. Like it wouldn't. In other words, at the end of the day, they wouldn't get enough money out of it to make it worthwhile. But uh, it really could use a PC port. Uh, it would fix a lot of its little issues. Um, it does have a bunch of issues with you know that are definitely fixable on a pc with a you know really good cpu as opposed to you know the cpus that we have in uh the consoles which are actually pretty old and pretty weak uh so anyway uh this is the upgraded buggy uh so to show it off for you guys uh this is probably the hardest conditions that this buggy is going to see uh in any race this is one of the hardest races that I've raced a buggy in uh, in the game so far, uh, just because of the way that the uh, every the way everything's laid out, the way that the uh, as you can see I'm already going on two wheels here, um, just the way everything is laid out and uh, the fact that the AI does not seem to be at all affected by it. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Um, I kind of, I didn't want to go back this far, I don't think, but uh, I did it anyway. I think I was worried about, you know, because I, I wasn't actually trying to go through those, that checkpoint very fast because it was, it was already having an issue. So I didn't want to make it worse by uh, going through it even faster. But I was going through this a lot faster than I should have been. Uh, mostly because I wanted to pick up some positions because uh, it was a point-to-point race and I was afraid that I would lose it if uh, I didn't pick up positions quickly. And I didn't know how much more of the race really there was left. It did say, you know, 55% or 48% or whatever it was at that point. But sometimes they don't, they don't do a percentage. The percentages are not exactly accurate. Uh, the end comes very quickly <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, but uh, this was accurate at least, uh, which is good because this was not easy. And it was not easy to control the uh, car in this uh, in this race. 
but fortunately I was able to uh, get the um, get it under control and use uh, use some you know cutting cutting off some areas uh, obviously not going 100% by the line because that can also screw you up in a cross country race sometimes you have to kind of go by the line across country race because sometimes you uh, don't know where you're going otherwise. But um, in a case like this where it's a big open space and you can see where you're going, uh, you just try to get there as quickly as possible. So that was a very hard fought win, but it was a win nevertheless. And uh, it was a very, and I don't know that another buggy would necessarily have been better. Um, now there is a certain argument to be made for weight uh, you know, like if you have a bigger buggy, it weighs more. And uh, there's an argument to be made for that. But uh, it doesn't necess- it's not necessarily uh, the case. Uh, it's kind of weird. So here's another instance where I am going with the Warthog. Uh, just because the Warthog is better in every way than every other uh, eligible cross-country uh, race car <laughs> so no matter what you do to another car it's not going to ever be better than the warthog which is really crazy but it is true now the other thing is that you can upgrade uh, other cars beyond what you can do with the warthog the warthog does have a hard cap and it's a strange hard cap I believe it's like S uh, I want to say it's the middle of S uh, like S, I don't even remember. It's a weird one. Like a- S, say like, geez. Now that I've said it, I don't remember. It's like S863 or something. It's it's a weird, it's in a weird place. It's like in the middle of S. Um, and uh, that's why this is at just at A. Um because you can't go any further the they don't have parts to go beyond that uh, I'm assuming because the car doesn't drive properly if you go beyond that is what I would guess like it's not a manageable like it's not manageable anymore uh, which is interesting um, the other thing too is that there aren't really any choices for tires uh, which is also interesting um, it will do snow uh, Unlike some other cars, uh, it will it does have snow tires, but uh, I think you only have in total, I think three choices for tires, maybe two choices. I don't know. Uh, some trucks, uh, you only have uh, the cars the tires that are on it, or I think that they give you a choice of like drag tires. Uh, so obviously you can't use drag tires, you know, in general, you'll never go anywhere. Um, but like, uh, so that, that's not necessarily, uh, uncommon, but, uh, it is kind of a, it makes it more difficult to upgrade the car if you don't have a choice of tires and, 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 uh, being able to make the tires wider or nar- more narrow or things like that. Um, it does affect, you know, a big amount of upgrading. But, uh, you know, in general, you know, there's no real reason to have a car like this uh, be, you know, the the middle of S1. There's no real reason for it. Um, There's no real benefit to it necessarily. Um, I mean, I suppose if I could get to the top of S1, that would probably be the best of all possible worlds. I don't think I would want to go beyond that anyway. Uh, But, like, my uh, rally car is the top of S1, which really is, I feel, the sweet spot. Um, But uh, I don't know if it just, it just for some reason won't do it. Um, You know, maybe there's some kind of a braking issue or a turning issue or something like that. Whenever you get a car that is a weird configuration, which definitely the Warthog is a weird configuration, uh, you, you have issues like that. Uh, where you can have a weird turning radius or, you know, maybe a bad braking distance or something like that. Uh, so, you know, who knows? Uh, there might be something something like that involved. Uh, I don't know. But uh, 
in any case, it's uh, it's good. It's a good vehicle. Like I said, it's it's probably one of the best, if not the best, uh, cross country vehicle in the game. I think the Urus is probably right next to it, right, you know, right down next to it. Uh, especially because they you know want you to race in this sport utility vehicles. It's probably the best sport utility vehicle for by far. Um, as far as just a regular old. Uh, cross country racing vehicle, however, uh, I would say that probably um, there are a few that are better, um, but nothing that would match the thing of sports utility vehicle. So, um, if you want to do the default races, then you won't be able to use that. Uh, you won't be able to use anything but this or, or a sport utility vehicle. Uh, this is one of the few times that a car has actually flipped on me. Um, but you can see that it was coming off of a jump. Um, usually it'll just do what it just did there. Um, it'll it'll go front end and then it'll drop. Uh, but I'm assuming because of the design of the car, uh, that's how it could flip. Also, it was probably my partly my fault for going off of that jump the way I did. Um, so it's 50 50, but by the same token, you don't ever want to see that. Uh, you don't want to see your vehicle, uh, in a position where it's just doing a regular racing maneuver and it flips. That's not good. Um, so obviously if you can avoid driving sports utility vehicles, uh, I would, but I wanted to do this, uh, purely because it was the default race. And I wanted to make sure that I wasn't uh, lose. I, I wasn't losing credit because it was the def was if I changed the default race from what it was supposed to be. I don't honestly know if that does that. I have a feeling it doesn't, but I wanted to make sure, so that's why I did it that way. Um, as far as what this car, if what this vehicle has on it, I thought that it had a roll bar, but it might not. It might not be available. Uh, sometimes the roll cages are not available or an anti-roll bar is not available um, on some kinds of vehicles. Uh, it's not on all of them, but on some kinds. Uh, I think I just went a little bit too far at this point. I was like, there's no way I'm going to try to recover from this. Uh, so that's why I'm using a rewind. Uh, as you could see that other time when it was that first time that I uh, that I had a problem coming off the, the one jump. Uh, I just left it. I went to like back again to like sixth or seventh place, and then I raced up again. And then, of course, when the car flipped, I wanted to, to uh, I wanted to rewind then because I'd actually hit that wall. So I wanted to make sure that I didn't lose too many positions for that. And then, obviously, with this, I had just got gone too far in the race to try to recover because that's what I was afraid would happen is it wouldn't be recoverable. So. That's why I did that. Uh, I don't. I try to use it. I don't try to use it that much, but I have to say that in this game, in Forza Horizon 4 specifically, uh, I've actually had a need to use it a lot more often, the the rewinds uh, than I have in previous uh, titles. Uh, I feel like this race, uh, this game, excuse me, actually puts you in positions where you would need to use it more than you would think uh, if you just hit something wrong. Uh, which maybe is in the whole spirit of having to do everything over and over again. But uh, I don't know. Um, again, if the drive cars were harder, it would be probably even worse. Uh, you'd probably be in a position where you'd have to do it uh, even more often. Uh, so the championship just popped. And uh, here we are at the Titan, which is the regular, the exhibition championship for this race. And uh, guess what? I'm going for the Warthog, because why wouldn't you? So this is the cross-country championship uh, called the Titan. Uh, you can pick any cross-country car. Uh, you know, in other words, any car that's... Well, actually, you can pick any car that you want to do it. But if you're not picking a cross-country specific car, you're going to have a lot of trouble. So, um, I would pick a cross country specific car. Um, and you'll know what those are because you'll be doing that in the entire time you've been, you've been doing these races. 
Um, and uh, it's a pretty, it's a decent race. Uh, it's not like mind blowing or anything, but then again, none of these have really been. Uh, I'm told that the uh, trial championships are much better, uh, that they're much harder, uh, which is interesting. Um, even though that they kind of advertise these as being really hard. <laughs> so, uh, that's interesting, but, um, yeah. So, you know, I, I, I kind of, I wanted to show you guys all of these, uh, you know, both the cross country, you know, both the, uh, trial championships and the regular ones so that you guys can, can see what the eventuality to all this is and see if you think it's, you know, worth it, uh, for yourself, you know, if you want to, if you want to go through this, um, it, I wouldn't recommend doing it the way I've been doing it, which is, you know, going through it at, f you know, four hours at a time, you know, kind of, uh, kind of really, um, laser beam focusing on, uh, doing all the races. Uh, I think that doing that pretty much is going to set you up for burning out uh, on the game uh, only because I think that most people don't want to do, you know, necessarily race after race after race after race. Um, I definitely would throw in some, you know, multiplayer challenges or doing some of the story or, um, you know, uh, some stuff like that, maybe just driving around looking for barn finds, things like that. I mean, that's what I've been using kind of as a, as a palate cleanser is driving around looking for barn finds. Um, but I have to say that, you know, you, they're not making it easy in this game. Uh, you really are being pushed a little bit to do a lot of events and, uh, you're being kind of pushed to do them. I, I wouldn't say like necessarily in succession, like, they're not really pushing you to, okay, now do this one, uh, kind of like they've done in the past. But I would say that you're being kind of pushed in the sense that um, you are, they're kind of saying that you should be doing Forzathons, you should be doing the seasonal events, um, and those are kind of the things that they're pushing the most, um, which is fine. And I think that those there's a lot of worth in that, but I think also... If you only do that, you will have a problem with that you won't feel like you're getting anywhere in the game, uh, which is almost as bad as um, which is almost as bad as being burned out, you know, because you're going to just be like, oh, God, you know, I just, I'm just playing this. This is just endless, you know, um, which I don't think it is. I don't think it's endless. I think that there is a finite end to it and uh, you just have to get there. Uh, but I, I, you know, I don't know. It's made to kind of be a social experience and I'm not doing that, um, because I've not done it in the past. So, you know, obviously that's not something that I'm kind of into, but, uh, it does it definitely has hooks to be a social experience. Uh, all they have to do is get it off the windows 10 store and, and onto steam. And it would probably be very easy for it to be a social experience. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, uh, that aside, um, I would say that it's just a matter of, you know, just like a Far Cry game, for instance, you don't want to play the whole thing. Uh, you don't want to try to play the whole thing in the first two weeks it comes out, you know. Uh, you want to spread it out so that you don't get tired of it. Uh, you don't want to spread it out so much, though, that you lose interest, uh, which is another thing that definitely they have some issues with, um, is when you get, a, you know, you're having, you have fun while you're playing it, but then, when you get away from it, it's sort of like, oh, you know, now I want to go do something else, um, which uh, is definitely an issue with games that are more, uh, more a live game and more a game where you have to, where they want you to keep interacting with it, you know, on a weekly basis, let's say. Um, so it'll be interesting with this root editor, how this root editor works, um, and uh, exactly how uh, how much it will add to the game. Um, I have, uh, purposely not, uh, looked at the interview that explains exactly how it works, uh, because I want to be surprised and I want to, you know, uh, 
enjoy it when it comes out as opposed to knowing exactly what it is even before it releases, uh, which uh, I think is what a lot of people do. They want to see exactly what something is before it comes out, which I can kind of understand, but uh, as somebody who, you know, it's an inevitability. It's not like I'm deciding whether or not I want to buy it. It's just going to be there. So rather than uh, focusing on, you know, what it's going to be prior to it coming out, uh, I would rather enjoy it after it comes out as opposed to, um, you know, and being surprised or disappointed or whatever then as opposed to uh, trying to find everything out ahead of time. So, uh, yeah, that's about going to do it for this championship. And obviously we won. No surprise. Um, I would say that uh, it's uh, it's one of the better ones in the game. It's one of the better championships in the game. Uh, I enjoyed this one and the dirt one the most. Um, the other ones are just sort of, they're okay. You know, they're not bad. They're okay. But uh, I would have preferred a little bit, something a little different for the other ones. Uh, hopefully, which they will give in the form of the trial championships but uh we'll see so now we're moving on to doing some street racing and we're going to be doing it in the impreza um and this impreza actually is the barn find impreza that you get um not the one that you get at the beginning of the game if you uh pick it so this is not the street racing in, uh, the road racing, excuse me, Impreza. This is the barn find one. Uh, the reason you want to do the barn find, you want to use the barn find one, is that it is a legendary rank car, which means that it has twice as many perks on it as uh, the regular epic uh, version. So you want to use this one, you want to kit this one out, uh, not only because you'll be getting better. Um, better rewards like wheel spins and credits and things like that, but also because you'll be getting more uh, skills and perks and things like that um, from the car itself. So you'll be getting longer, um, you'll be getting longer uh, skill chains and things like that. So uh, as long as you don't hit uh, random vehicles, because uh, then, then you won't. But I didn't see how I was going to avoid that. They put that car there to make it an issue, and it definitely was. I used to think that the traffic was random in the street races, but the more I play the street races, the more I feel like that the traffic is not random, that it's placed, or at least the spawns are placed for the traffic, so uh, that it will be an issue. Because uh, I, I, I have a lot of times seen uh, instances where, you know, just so happens that there's a car there, you know. They used to do that in Need for Speed as well. I mean, actually, Need for Speed, I think that there was all of the traffic in the events were placed. But uh, it might just be my paranoia. Anyway, but... Uh, so as you can see that the uh, that the roads are incredibly wet, uh, it is raining in this race. Uh, there a lot of the races, a lot of the street races, it's raining. Uh, I would say over half, and uh, they want you to, in many cases, not so much in that race, in the entirety of that race. There's there's were a few parts, but uh, in a lot of cases, they want you to make very tight turns. On, on wet pavement and you end up uh, sliding quite a bit and uh, having a lot of grip problems um, and also braking distance problems of course as well uh, but I would also say that if you bring an underpowered car to the street races like if you bring an A for instance um, you maybe will have an easier time but I wouldn't count on it um, every once in a while with a street race, at least in Forza Horizon 3, they would uh, have a situation where if you brought two uh, underpowered of a car, uh, you would just get smoked, uh, which I thought it, that was interesting in that game. 
I'm not entirely sure that that would, it would work that same way here. Uh, I do know that there's a lot of times a big difference from one car to another as far as uh, power is concerned, but I don't know if that is uh, if that is true 100% of the time. Um, it could be, but uh, I don't know necessarily if that's the case. So um, I have, and I mean I haven't tested it, but uh, in Forza Horizon 3 it definitely happened once or twice. So it's possible that it's the same system here. Uh, although a lot of the systems in this game have cha are different from those in Forza Horizon 3, so it's you know it's hard to say for sure. But uh, you know you never know. I mean, as you saw in that other game, in that other, in the last race, uh, one of the top three was like a Lamborghini, uh, which, you know, a Lamborghini and Impreza, and uh, I don't know what that other third car was. You know, walk into a bar. You know, um, I'm not entirely sure. You know, uh, they did from the from the results screen though. Uh, we all had a very similar class. Uh, class numbers which could be a balancing thing like they could be balancing out the field uh, when you pull up in whatever you're pulling up in um, or it could just be an S no matter what uh, I honestly don't know I never raced uh, with in street racing with anything less than an S so I can't really say for one for you know for sure one way or another um, I did race once in a truck and I was still okay so, um, but I have a feeling that it wouldn't necessarily be all the time. Uh, there is, there was a certain amount of randomness to the midnight races in Forza Horizon 3, so it's possible that there would be that same kind of randomness here, uh, although I haven't seen it. Uh, the other thing is that I think is really stupid is that, um, they do have, uh, unusual cars and trucks and stuff in the, uh, in the auto show. But uh, I was under the impression at some point uh, with the marketing for this game that we were going to get motorcycles, uh, which we never got. I don't think we're getting. Um, I also kind of was under the impression that we would be able to drive uh, a hovercraft. Um, and I think there might be one in the auto show, but I'm not sure. If it's not in the auto show, I think it's in a super wheel spin. Um, I thought I saw it, but I might be wrong about that too. Um, I do know that there are trucks that came over from for you know there are race trucks that came over from Forza Motorsport Seven, but I think that's it. I think that is the most unusual thing. And those there's only one truck, which means that. Which means that when you go into a race with that one truck, all of the trucks that you're going into the race with are going to be that one truck. Which, do they know that? Do they realize that? Do they realize how stupid that is? You know, it's like, at least make three. I mean, how much different can the trucks be? You know? It's super boring to do that. I mean, it's just, a, it makes the race boring, you know, to have all the same car. And when they're like kind of, you know, when they're kind of making it so that that is what's going to happen for sure, then that's like even worse. I don't know. They still have DLC. Maybe they'll come out with some more trucks. That would be nice. But I don't think they're going to come out with bikes because if they if they had the model for the bikes, I think they would have done it already. I don't think that it's like a... I think that the if they had the handling model, if they had the driving model for bikes, I think that it would be in there by now. I don't think it would be like, oh, and for this DLC, we're going to come out with bikes, you know, unless it's like a DLC expansion, and then maybe they would. It'll be like the bike expansion. That would be interesting. That would be unusual, like a motocross expansion or something. That would be very good. That I would definitely... I would definitely pay $20 for that. For sure. But uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I know that this is... <laughs> I know that I'm a little further ahead in the game than we are showing here. But even so, I, I'm not ready for expansion packs quite yet. Um, I'll be interested to see what this root editor does for us. 
Hopefully it will do something, hopefully it will make the game significantly more replayable. Uh, as it stands right now, I don't know how excited I will be with about blueprinting out, you know, five level tiers worth of uh, road racing and probably way more than that on the other ones. Um, I, and I would really like to see what the... But I would really like to see what the wrap-up is for this game as opposed to what it was for previous ones. The previous games, the wrap-ups were pretty decent, although I felt like Forza Horizon 3 just stopped, which I didn't appreciate. Um, the other, the expansions, though, were really good, so hopefully they'll err on the side of having a bad ending and then having good expansions rather than having a good ending and having bad expansions, <laughs> which uh, which would be preferable, to say the least. Uh, so we are closing in here on the end of the video. Um, we are going to be taking a look, I think, at one more race. And then it's going to be over. As you can see, I spent a heck of a lot of money. I spent, like, at one point that I didn't show you guys, I think I spent about... What was it? Four million dollars? Four million credits, excuse me. Yeah, this is the last race. Okay. Um so uh yeah, so I got some cars that I wanted. Um some more expensive high tier high tier cars, uh like the Sienna, for instance. Uh so that cost a pretty penny. Uh the Sienna itself is like a million, and then uh I think I don't remember what the other ones I bought were at this point. It was quite a while ago that I bought them. But um, I don't know. It, it's never those cars. It, it's very funny because, like, in the past, like, I've had cars where I purchased, you know, like the like the Lamborghini Centaro, for instance, and I used that car so much that people were, like, sick of seeing it in videos. And in this game, it's always the cars, the cars that I use the most um, – generally speaking are cars that I've either won or that I got from barn finds uh, which I think is really funny uh, because it's like a totally different you know like you don't even practically see the cars that uh, I I purchased it's always you know cars that I found from barn finds or cars that I won which uh, I win you've been winning a decent number of cars actually uh, in this uh, in this particular game uh, even though the wheel spins are just covered with emotes and gear, uh, the gear pieces drop, I would say, 60% of the time. And then the emotes drop another, uh, I don't know, 10 to 20%. And then it's just that last 20% or so that are cars and money. Uh, money's gone up a little bit recently for me, uh, but it's still... Uh, the st it's still maybe just like 30 60 for cars and money as opposed to uh you know getting gear or uh emotes uh at some point i hope to have all the gear so they can't put the gear on there anymore and hopefully at some point i'll have a all the emotes so they won't be able to put that on there anymore so i'll have to get either money or cars but uh i don't know there's a heck of a lot of emotes and gear uh, way too much. It's just like, I don't know why, you know, they, they have like six different kinds of sweater and, you know, 25 different t-shirts and it's just like, really, you know, just, but whatever. It's just glad they don't have any microtransactions. That's all I got to say. So that's just going to about do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button on your way out. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for your support. And I uh, hope to see you all in the next video. Bye.